So let's take a look at this first video here. So this was probably taken right after they got to the bottom of the ocean floor. Now you can see some debris, those little black pieces there. That's probably from the Titan. And there it is coming into view. This is, you're looking at the aft portion of it. So this is the whole outside shell with the, with all of the controls on it and everything. And I'll show you in a second where that is on the actual you know, Titan craft. So it's just amazing how eerie this must have been for them to discover this. It's like my heart would just fall through my stomach and I, I would gasp because you can see what this means because they thought they were going down there to rescue them. Maybe they were just sitting on the bottom of the ocean floor. Well, it was on the bottom of the ocean floor, but it was in pieces. And then if you look up here, you can see this looks like another part of it up here. I don't know why they're not zooming in on it or getting closer to it. And this is the end of the first clip right here. So I don't know why in the world they didn't show more of this. Why are they breaking it up into basically a one minute long clip? So as you recall, here's one of those engineering drawings showing the glass fiber shell on the back end of it, the tail end. And there's what the Ocean Gate Titan submarine looked like in better times with the Ocean Gate logo visible on it. Now I want to show you a much better 3D modeling rendering of the Titan sub. And I'll show you exactly where that is on the submersible. Now, if you remember the video I showed you last year showing you Amber's video from Asget Industries, she does incredible 3D renderings. And here she shows you the outline of the, the whole Titan submersible. And there it is on that aft section. See, with the cage and all that, that's the part that we were looking at on the ocean bottom there. So she does an incredible job. Make sure you check the link in the video description below that shows you her entire video. And you can see there she pointed to exactly where it came from on that tail section. We'll analyze more of the underwater video in a minute. I just wanted to show you this. Here is the rover that discovered the Titan right there on the bottom of the ocean floor. This is called the Pelagic Odysseus 6K or the 6000 ROV remote controlled rover. And so they lower this unmanned thing into the water. And of course, there's the section of the Titan that was pulled off of the deck of the Polar Prince. So it's eerie to think that the Polar Prince originally, a few days ago, just brought these men out there for a good time to go down and dive the Titanic. And now the same Polar Prince ship is bringing back the parts of their busted up Titan submersible. Kind of like JFK with Air Force One, how Air Force One flew him out to Dallas and then flew his body back in a coffin. Let's check out the detail on the orientation here. So I slowed it down 8x or so. And as we come around the back side of it here, yeah, I mean, you can see this thing is really mostly intact. Even the strap is still on it. But here, as you look on the back edge of it, you can see the Ocean Gate logo, the Titan is just coming into view there. So, you know, this would just be so heartbreaking if you're the operator of this ROV to see this on your screen. I would just be totally freaking out at this point. But you can see that the entire aft end of the Ocean Gate Titan submersible is basically kind of standing up cone upwards, you know, the tail end up on the bottom of the ocean floor there. And it's 330 meters off of the bow of the Titanic. So they were actually very close. In fact, in actuality, they did make it down to the bottom of the Titanic site, but unfortunately they were not around to be able to enjoy it. Just about an hour ago, the Coast Guard released a second video for us. So let's take a look at this. Now they gave us this second video here, which looks like it was taken probably about an hour and a half later. Now this right here, that looks like the viewport to me. And it looks like it's in pretty good shape. I don't think that's the titanium dome because it would be bigger like this over here. This is the titanium dome. There you can see the ring. And this looks like a huge chunk of the five inch thick carbon fiber hull still attached to this part of it so it was not a clean shear off of there as you can see so during the implosion it looks like the titanium cone was blown right off and then it just sank further down to the bottom that was a laser beam you saw the rov just shoot out so they can get the distance from it 
so they can tell what what it is they're looking at and maybe try to judge the size of it. You know, without anything reference to it, you can't really tell the size. But there you can see that five inch thickness of the carbon fiber hull there. And I'm frankly surprised that you even have this big of a chunk because I thought with an implosion that all of those pieces would have been blown over everywhere. And there's your, you know, at, at this point, I still can't tell if that's the other titanium dome or if it's the, the window. You just don't have enough good, clean white light on it. And they didn't get it close up and you didn't get it close up to see uh, with a reference of size either. So they're coming back over here to it. And it looks like that it's got maybe some sand. Yep, maybe that is the other titanium dome. So it's a little hard to tell. So let us know in the comments what you think that is down below. So what I just showed you was the full size. So now what I did was zoom in here just to this part. I want to get a closer look to try to determine if that's the titanium ring. And I think it is. You can almost see the hole there where the port window is supposed to go the acrylic port. So if that's the case, it looks like the carbon fiber hull was just ripped completely cleanly off of the front end. And then as you can see from this photo right here, this shows you the outside of the cylindrical capsule of the Titan and how it is mated to those rings connecting it to the titanium dome. So you might remember from seeing some of the previous videos in the past how they applied it with that kind of peanut butter paste. That's what they're calling it, you know, that kind of famous, it looks like peanut butter, it goes on like peanut butter. And so that was the adhesive that they used to connect the Titan's cylindrical cabin to the titanium domes. It's the glue holding the family together and we want to make sure it's right. The glue is very thick, so it's not like Elmer's glue, it's like uh, peanut butter. And where is the ring at? Hopefully they will eventually get around to giving us video showing the rings lying on the bottom of the floor. Because here you saw them hoisting it up there and it looks picked clean, like there's no carbon fiber on it at all. Take a look again here when they were gluing together the titanium ends onto the carbon fiber cylinder. There's two things I'm seeing here. Number one, look at this technician's hands. I don't know why he's not wearing gloves. This should be a reasonably sterile environment. And you can see now he's putting his hand on the stupid titanium ring. Now let's just contaminate that some more with our uh, with our fingerprints and our oils from the, our hands. And then one other thing that you really need to consider here is these titanium rings. Before you put any type of adhesive on there, how is adhesive going to stick onto a good shiny smooth metal so what i don't see here and i didn't even hear the mention is did they bother to do any kind of abrasion or sanding on there or do an acid etch or something to rough up that surface to give the adhesive something to just cling on to that's what you're missing here and so i think that probably explains why like i've showed you in the in some of our previous videos when they pulled up uh, some of the debris from the bottom of the ocean floor why the titanium rings are smooth and it looks like they were a hundred percent picked clean of any of the carbon fiber material not even little chunks that might have been left glued that glue over time i think with the compression cylinder constantly under compression and expansion as it goes down and comes back up and you get all of this uh, cyclic fatigue going i think also that that adhesive likely just cleanly stripped itself right off of those titanium rings now coming back a few yards away to the other section here. So this does look like it's the aft titanium dome. And you can tell it's still almost intact. It didn't quite come completely separated off there. So it looks like the glue sort of held on a little bit there. And it's not surprising because all of the attachments and everything on there likely cushioned the effects of the implosion and prevented it from just blowing into a million pieces. But I mean, look at the size of the pieces of the black carbon fiber all over the ocean floor. So it gives you an idea as to how big of a size that the implosion destroyed the pieces and reduced them to. It looks like there aren't any parts down there that are any bigger than say a foot, you know, from the carbon fiber standpoint. And then if we go back to the Asgen Industries 3D model, here Amber put together a diagram showing all of the parts that were brought up that we saw them brought up that day in St. John's, Newfoundland on the Coast Guard station. And here's where all of the different parts came from on the Ocean Gate Titan submersible. And also here in her 3D rendering, she shows how 
the carbon fiber cylinder was glued onto the ring. And so the red line there represents the glue. And you can see how the carbon fiber is connected in there. So many of the theories you've heard probably bouncing around from different engineers are that, you know, the pressure of constantly going up and down to the Titanic over uh, several trips, you can see what happens here. The pressure tends to want to try to allow a little bit of water to sneak in through those red lines. And if this cycle happens enough times and combined with the delamination of the individual carbon fiber layers and stuff, well, this is what happens. The result is, of course, what we now know to be history and the implosion of the Ocean Gate Titan submarine. Now, the U.S. Coast Guard has started their public hearings into the investigation of the Ocean Gate Titan submersible implosion, and that started this week. So I've already been listening to several days in a row of nonstop 8 o'clock in the morning till 4 or 5 in the afternoon of testimony. And so I'll be doing videos showing, you know, just the most kind of juiciest details for you, you know, some of the surprising findings and anything that's important and all of the other details that are pertinent to this investigation. And if this is your first time here on the channel and you haven't seen our videos on the analysis of the Titan implosion from last year, man, are you missing out. So make sure you check out these videos here and binge watch and get caught up. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you on the next one.